Hello, and welcome to this review of Old Crow, Dr. James Crow, Old Crow. Um, you might know about this. Um, you could get on the internet and read about it, but this bourbon whiskey came out onto the market in 1835, developed by Dr. James Crow, who not necessarily, but probably was the inventor of the sour mash process. Um, even if he wasn't the inventor, he was an early utilizer of it. Okay, and so he invented his whiskey, which became known as Old Crow, Dr. James Crow. But, of course, people identify it with the bird, the crow. Um, <clears throat> I did a previous video of the 1977 bottle of Old Crow Bonded. Um, very good. Hadn't been hadn't ever been opened, even though it was bottled four years before, distilled in 1969. It was good. It was a little harsh, though. I kept drinking and thinking on it, and I said, I don't know. Maybe I'm weak. I can't handle things, but it uh, seemed like the 80 proof is a little more in line with what I want. Doesn't mean that one is better than others, just a personal enjoyment factor, whatever. So, um, the Old Crow here, this is a 1987 recipe, all right? Old Crow, the uh, W.A. Gaines Company, was bought out in 1987, and it was reformulated to fit in with what the new owners, the Jim Beam Company, wanted to do. Still a pretty popular item. I bought this bottle for $10.99 at Dorgmax. They sell it around here, but it's in the big plastic jug bottle and uh, the, with the handle, the handle bottle. And, um, it's actually cheaper that way per ounce, but I rather the glass. It just seems like a better presentation. Age three years in new oak barrels, new charred oak barrels, in Clermont and <coughs> Frankfort, Kentucky. So um, here's some things upcoming: Saint Remy, BSOP French brandy, and the Beams Eight Star. This is the modern version, the 80/20 blend. The one I did previously last year was the earlier version, the 7525 blend, no longer produced. We'll get to those later. This one, um, it's typical in its appearance, kind of a light amber type thing. Um, maybe it'd be better with ice. I'm just going to drink it here. It's a little warm in the house, a little warm now, you know, April setting in. We've got a cold front coming, but it does um, have a strong, what I would call, beam house style to it. Um, even the 8-star, that 2005 bottle, and then the Jim Beam, the regular bourbon that I have in the cabinet. And this one, they seem to have like a, just a house style. It's hard to pin down, but they just seem familiar to each other. It's sweet caramel alcoholic antiseptic type thing but then there's this underlying and then I'm always thinking when I'm describing it that could be wrong could be wrong you know but I'm not an expert on it but it just seems like there's this mossy like a green wood a mossiness more so with the beam the gem beam but it's there it's um it's good it's not a bad I'm not saying it's a detractor or repellent. It makes it unpleasant. It's just unique. And I don't think unique is bad. It's just different. Different, odd, a little exotic. Same thing in the flavor. It's got... I might have a problem trying to differentiate this from Jim Beam bourbon, honestly. The more that I'm drinking it, sipping on it, smelling it, thinking about it. I'm not saying it's a clone or anything like that, but it's very similar. There's a burn, but it's mild, mellow, pleasant. Um, so there's vanilla, oak, I mean so much oak. 
it's been aged for three years in oak barrels. Um, very faint char. It's mellow, mellow, mellow. Um, some mint, menthol. Um, but see, I'm thinking you're describing the gem bean. It's the same thing. But it's not. I know it's not. But it's. I know this much though. Um, why would I pay thirteen ninety nine? And that's a sale price for the gem bean. When I could get this, the the regular price is ten ninety nine, and on sale nine ninety nine. So I'm not a person that cares about buying labels and name recognition and. Um, I don't want to show up at a party and be embarrassed. I mean, I'll bring Old Crow, and if people don't want to drink it, I'll say, don't drink it. You couldn't tell it apart anyway, you know, but anyway. But, uh, so, um, although, honestly, at parties, I run across problems more. We're bringing more, more of the gourmet stuff than the regular. If I show up with Bud Light, people are like, good, you brought something good. If I show up with what they consider exotic, like Guinness Extra Stout, then they say, why you brought that? So, um, but anyway, enough of all of that. Uh, it's a kind of a medium body, typical, again, I think I said that in the other two. Um, and it's a, it's a sharp drop off in the finish. It's not a long finish. If you want something that's really dry, it just finishes like, it's, you taste it and boom, it's done. This could really work. And I think the ice might draw it out a little bit. Um. Uh, but then on the other hand, it would mellow it out, so it would probably, those two attributes would cancel each other out. Um, I don't see any problem with this. You say, what are the, what are the negatives? What's, what's wrong with Old Crow? Uh, to me, with my limited experience, there is nothing wrong with it. You might be able to, oh, it's tasting more. <laughs> it's tasting more and more like Jim Beam, I swear. I, I feel funny about saying that, but um, you might drink it and say, I can name 10 different things wrong with this and all the flaws, and that's fine, and I would listen and watch your video and say, mm, okay, I didn't think about that. Oh, all right, which is what I do all the time when I'm watching beer reviews and wine and liquor, but um, I just don't see anything wrong with it. Um, would I buy it again? I, obviously, I would. Um, I probably never will just because you don't get back to stuff. Um, this 100 proof... Yeah, it's got a richer flavor. It's darker, as you can see. It's got more character. It's got more body. It's got more everything. But sometimes more is not a benefit. Sometimes less is more to me. Like, this one is more pleasant, okay? I know they made an 80 proof Old Crow before 1987, okay? This was just an, an option, okay? There was the Old Crow bonded... And I've seen the old photos. There was an, also an old crow, just sour mash, 80 proof. And it might have been very similar to this. I don't know. But to me, the bonded one is a little harsh, a little rough. Um, I didn't say that at first, but then I started drinking on it. And the more I drank, I said, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Whereas this one, the modern, three decades old old crow, it's no challenge. It's just... And that seems to be the thing these days. 80 proof is where everybody wants to be. And that's where I want to be. Call me weak. I'll, I'll go along with that. Yeah, so mighty fine. I highly recommend it. Even though I admit that I'm, I'm having a funny feeling about it because every sip is making me think of Jim Beam. So it's got me kind of, kind of confused a little bit. But... Um, I shouldn't be confused. It's the same company, right? But still, it's kind of a little troubling, you know, in some ways. But I, I like it, and I recommend it. Thanks for watching this video production.